Welcome to Nebraska's Sand Hills, a sea of rolling dunes held together by the roots of America's short grass prairie. This cattle country is a place where bird dogs can stretch their legs in pursuit of prairie chicken and sharp-tailed grouse. Here goes more. Oh no. The best way to experience this upland adventure may be from the top of a horse. That's if you can ride. The Flush, presented by Federal Premium Ammunition and Peasants Forever. So go ahead and hop up in there. I want you to feel, uh, for lack of a better term, athletic yeah. in the saddle because there's quite a bit of movement that's gonna be required. In Nebraska's ranch country, you aren't much good if you can't ride a horse. You know, she's not bronchy at all, yeah. um, but if she starts to slip and, and sort of lose her footing, I want you to be able to get that leg out of there and get off. Fortunately, I can ride, but I'm really just a hack. Well, hello, beautiful. She rides like a Cadillac. Now you're trying to butter her up. Oh. How are you? Matt Frugier and Aaron Martin are veterinarians that make their living working with both horses and cattle. They understand their tics. She licking her lips at all yet? That's how you know you've done it. Really? Look at them lips. That's Fireball, Matt's oldest horse and my partner on this trip. Well, her register name's Fireball, but <laughs> her, her, her call name is Mesa. She's probably the best horse we've got out here. She also has a bit of a reputation. She's distrustful of men. And once you get on her, she'll, she's gonna take real good care of you. That's if she trusts me. Perfect. All right. Yeah, how we doing there? Is she okay? I don't know what that was about. She's having a fit. I don't know what her issue this morning is. She just gets a little fresh. I guess I wasn't, I didn't think it would be quite quite like that. But I, I will say it speaks to her character that she wanted you off and she did it in the absolute ginless way that she possibly could. She didn't buck, she laid down and played dead. We had a, a mild rodeo, I would say. That wasn't bucking, just so you know. That wasn't bucking. It's a Western adventure, right? Yeah, it's all part of the process, I guess, huh? I gotta earn it, I gotta earn it. It's okay. Yeah, you wanna try this again? Yeah. I'm not a cowboy, but I'm also not one to back down. It could have gone four, four words. Finally securing the saddle, our Nebraska Sandhills hunt begins. What we are hunting here would be the, the interior greater prairie chicken. Prairie chicken are native birds that once flourished on America's open prairie. Like most upland game birds, their numbers aren't what they once were. The populations in Nebraska's Sandhills region remain fairly strong. So the Sandhills are exactly what they sound like. They're grass-stabilized sand dunes. It's harsh. It's, uh, they're canyons. You know, there's some, some steep washouts, but uh, just absolutely gorgeous place. Matt, Aaron, and their friend Grant Notkin prefer these views from a saddle, which is why they've been nicknamed the Upland Cowboys. It's not really why we do what we do, but I guess it, it fits when you're on horseback and chasing bird dogs. Riding horseback helps us to cover this seemingly endless terrain. Oh, there goes oh. one. Whoa. Also adds another element to the hunt. Got up right in here. 
A lot of times there'll be another bird that'll hold. It's a big country. <laughs> this is a really big country. The hope is that dog will find a bird at some distance away from you. Go on point and hold that point. You will ride up within 50, 40 or 50 yards depending on the landscape. I'll hop off of the horse, drop his reins, grab my shotgun, load it as I'm walking towards the dog. In an ideal world, as I'm walking up to that dog, a bird gets up and I take my shot. But of course, these are wild birds that don't care about our plans. We'll find our group. They're all over. They are. It's only a matter of time. At least that's our hope. We're already two months into the hunting season, which means these flighting birds are extra jumpy. There's three there. Yeah. Let's see where they go. Keep a close eye on them. There's a lot of eyes to sneak past. And the habitat they live in, there's a reason they choose it. It allows them to see predators coming from a ways away. It allows them to hear predators coming from a ways away. They landed, didn't they? I think so, yeah. Prairie chicken have a knack for staying just out of range. The upland cowboys have a knack for hunting until they win. Something has to give. The Flush is brought to you by Federal Premium Ammunition. North Dakota Tourism, Waltons, Benelli, and by Nutrisource. This segment of The Flush is brought to you by North Dakota Tourism. Start your journey at NorthDakotaLegendary.com. Sometimes the best way to appreciate a hunt is to stop and look around. Charisma is not a skill, it's a gift. It's a gift. Just like laying horses down, you know? Not everybody can do that. You know, you gotta pay a trainer a lot of money to teach a horse to do that. Nebraska sandhills roll across more than one quarter of the state. Once you're in them, nearly everything looks the same. There's a sign that says Cherry County, God's own cow country. And to me, that's it. Uh, when you get out here and you start walking, it's grass and hills and pretty views. And that's what I like. Following bird dogs while in the saddle only enhances these views. My summation would be, um, it's like taking a step back in time. I imagine my ancestors probably did the exact same thing. They probably hunted off a horseback. They did everything off a horseback. But their views look much different than ours. A lot of the early accounts would, would just make it sound like there were just tons of these birds. They'd blacken the skies. Kids would walk in front of the wagons with sticks, you know, in August, in July and August, killing the young birds and they'd eat them for supper. Western expansion and market hunting ultimately devastated their numbers. They would feel rail, rail cards. And, and send them out east, you know? And so uh, you'd hear of people taking 100 birds a day. Truthfully, prairie chickens in a large way sort of fueled the Western expansion because it gave a, a renewable food supply. You know, the irony there is as, as our populations were booming towards the West, populations were dying towards the East. We certainly can't change the past, but we can affect the future. You know, we're creating new habitat. We've got what I would say was probably akin to what the landscape was back then. We've got a lot of, a lot of open pastures, some tall grass prairies, uh, some, some evergreen trees, and we've got some small grain agriculture. It's just this perfect blend of, of all these things, food sources and habitat, just creates a very good landscape for these birds to do well in. This is a bird that makes its living out here where we do, but it's a piece of American history. They like to be out of the wind. They like to be in the sun. That's where I seem to have the best luck. Saddles and bowls. Prairie chicken no longer turn these skies black. But they're still here. In the tree. Yeah. Oh. There goes more. Oh, no. Oh, no. I think they just went right over this. 
<laughs> oh, porcupine. Good girl. Yeah. Do you think they would have gone on that other ridge to be this side with the wind? I was thinking if they went anywhere, it might have been on this slope up ahead. Okay. I mean, they're flying into the wind. There they go. 9, 10, 11. Oh, man. I don't know what you think, but with the wind coming like this, does it make sense to go down? Probably saddle up, go yeah. back down that way and around. Yeah, I think come back because I think they're just on the edge of where those trees are, right? Right there. Did you know they were down there? I thought they were up there. No, I did. I said, I'm going to grab the gate. You get ready. Because oh. I figured once I walked up to the gate, if they were around there. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know what Delmar Smith said? If you flush them three times, they'll sit the third one. Maybe it's the fourth time's the charm. And you're like, well, we're going to go chase them. And well, we came here to hunt. <laughs> so yeah, no, we are. <laughs> that's, that's what we're going to do. Tomorrow, we ride with a new plan. The Flush is brought to you by Ruffland Performance Kennels, Big Timber Fasteners, Sage and Breaker, DeWalt, and by Aluma Trailers. Pheasants Forever remains committed to protecting and restoring wildlife habitat. Join Pheasants Forever today and you'll help us to create more habitat, cleaner water, and abundant wildlife. Your $35 will make a difference today that will last forever. For many upland hunters, the greater prairie chicken sits on the top of their bird hunting bucket list. They are hard birds to find. Point. Even harder birds to take on the wing. Their sharp eyesight and flighty nature often lead to flushes well out of range. But they do have a weakness. Prairie chicken follow a daily pattern. This is where they came down at. Being heels adjacent to corn is like somebody wrote a script for where prairie chickens would want to be. This afternoon, I think uh, this would be a good spot to make an attempt on. Okay. We'll come back here this evening. In the meantime, Matt's English pointers lead us through the dunes. That's Zeke, Matt Fruget's six-year-old lemon English pointer, and that's Bart, his four-year-old. Bart hunts with only one eye after losing his other to a bout with blastomycosis. We never thought he'd hunt again. It was just brute toughness and um, stubbornness, I think, is what made him survive. The dogs have become more accustomed to being hunted off a of horseback, and it actually makes their travel far more efficient. Instead of them uh, constantly coming back to check on you because you're moving one to a half a mile an hour, you know, you're moving consistently three to five miles an hour. A rooster. Jeez, that bird's lucky. Big old rooster. Lucky, not in season. Oh, pen, pen. I was thinking to myself, this looks like a good spot for a bobwhite covey. There, there are multiple different op, uh, obstacles that we encounter while hunting. Um, if distance is the primary obstacle, horseback is the way to go. If fences and thick cover are an obstacle, you can't take a horse in there because you just can't reliably shoot off of a horse. I'd sure like to say it's easier. Um, it's the same level of effort, just applied differently. This hunt truly defines teamwork in the field. Oh. Yes! Yes! 
Yes! That was a beautiful bird. Yes! I know, I, I had to let it get out there a little bit. Good boy, Zeke. My goodness. I was beginning to wonder if it was ever going to happen. That's how fast it happens. Chicken That's how fast it That's happens. That's how fast it happens. Yeah, beautiful bird. Yeah. Beauty. We did it. Big hen. We did it. What a cool bird. I could kiss you right on the <laughs> mouth right now, Travis. <laughs> you can kiss that horse on the mouth. Fellas, most of them got away, but we got to take one home for dinner. I, I think today for all of us, it was a pretty emotional experience. It's a very special bird. A special bird that lives in a special place. I know, I could tell that you were doubting me too, but hey, persistence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I hear you. I hear you. Way to stick with it. Way to stick oh, with it. Over. And you get to this time of the season, there's and there's no such, there's thing, no as such thing as a dumb bird. No. But sometimes if you just put on enough miles, it happens. There's always a payoff for determination. Yeah. As long as you don't quit. Spoken like a true cowboy. We still got a lot of hunting left to do, guys. Yeah. Good work, Fireball. Lead the way, cowboy. Yeah. You smell that? Pretty chicken. Huh? You smell it? Okay. In the golden hour, we return to the hills that held birds this morning. We hope to catch them on their way to feed. Like clockwork, their evening flight begins. Where are they going? Here they come, they keep coming. Whoa. We follow their path to a freshly picked cornfield the worst possible scenario. I don't know if they're gonna stay. I think we just have to go right where we think they are. I think when they see us, they're going. Yeah. So I think we need to try and get on top of them. On the corn. In a matter of seconds, our hunt ends even quicker than it began. Par for the course when pursuing late season chickens on the prairie. The Flush is brought to you by Chief Upland, Wells Lamont Gloves, Superior Pump, Southwire Tools and Equipment, and by Wing It. memorable hunting moments in my life have all been hard earned. I'm not saying this hunt has been difficult, but we've certainly faced enough challenges that I won't soon forget it. Way to stick with it. Hi, sweetheart. Ready to go hunt? Okay. On our final morning, we get two more obstacles. Cold out here today, isn't it? Cold and wind. They're probably gonna wanna be in that little bit thicker cover. Yeah, I think much much the way that uh, pheasants tend to cling to cattails and extreme cold, this extreme wind is gonna keep them in that thicker red cover. Any tips to keep your hat on? Look down. <laughs> Look down. Matt Frugier's horses get a well-deserved break while we trudge through the dunes on foot. This would be a cold day on a horse. Your feet get so cold on a horse. Is that fresh? Our predominant winds come out of the west here, so you know these east-facing slopes are where we expect to find a roost. Prairie chicken have a tendency to travel, which means birds from that roost could literally already be in the next county. I mean, we can see a long ways, and there's three white dogs, roughly 180 to 200 yards, just ripping it up. <laughs> this big country is well suited for our big running pointers, especially Daisy, my one and a half year old GSP setter mix. 
She has a motor like few bird dogs I've ever seen. And that's the necessity of a big running dog out here, you know. I'm perfectly okay with you running big right now, girl. Go find them, kids. Yeah, and wherever they put their feet, you probably don't need to put yours. I trust their nose. Tail's high. Life is good. Boy, she's a meadow lark pointing machine. Get up, Zeke. Get up. Hunt them up. We know that the further we walk, the more chances we may get. But out here, there are simply no guarantees. This is textbook. Look at this. All these berries. They should just erupt out of this. Quite frankly, that's exactly how hunting should be. Hey, Days. Check this out. Life in the pasture out here is not easy. I enjoy prairie chickens, but getting out here in this open country and being able to have those views, I really enjoy it. Right there, she just went on point. That's a point. Another meadowlark. You earn every one you get, um, and that's kind of the way that I like it. Where are they, girl? Some hunts end with a bird in hand. This one closes with a view worth so much more. After three days in Nebraska sand hills, I've seen a glimpse of American history and the wild birds that flourished here well before my time. All thanks to a horse named Fireball and three bird hunters nicknamed the Upland Cowboys.